Expand your vocabulary with our core 2,000 words ebook. It's free and packed with essential expressions that you'll use on a daily basis. Start building your vocabulary today. Click the link in the description below to download your free Chinese ebook before it's gone. Hey, 大家好，我叫马艳茹。Hey, everybody, I'm Yan Ru Ma. Welcome to Chinese Class 101.com's 三分钟汉语 ，the fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn Chinese. In the last lesson, we learned the phrase. 你会说英语吗 ？Do you speak English? We mentioned the word 请问 which means excuse me in formal Chinese. But this isn't the only way to say excuse me or I'm sorry in Chinese. You will have to use different words in different situations. Don't worry, it will be very easy. In this lesson, we're going to learn how to make a proper apology in Chinese. The expression 请问 That we learned in the last lesson is used when asking a question. For example, 请问天安门在哪儿 Excuse me, where is 天安门请问天安门在哪儿 The first word is 请问 or excuse me. Then comes a place. In this case, 天安门 Next, we have 在 This is a word like the English look at it. Last we have "nar," which means "where." All together, it means something like "Excuse me, 天安门 located where?" 请问天安门在哪儿 An informal way to say "Excuse me" is 不好意思不好意思不 we have seen before and means something like "not." Next we have 好 which means "good." Finally, we have 意思 which means thought. Altogether, we get something that means not good thought, but which perhaps could be translated as "It is thoughtless of me." 不好意思 We can use 不好意思 when asking a question or when apologizing. All of these phrases can be used for either "Excuse me" or "I'm sorry." But if you really want to apologize for something, It might be better to use a different phrase. That phrase is 对不起 It means I am sorry, and can be used in both formal and informal situations. 对不起 This is so common that you should learn it all as one phrase, and not worry about breaking it down. 对不起 This is used as often as the phrase 谢谢 is to show appreciation. Now it's time for Yanru's tips. Please remember that in Chinese, if you accidentally bump into someone, we don't say "Excuse me," 请问 instead say 对不起 Are you able to count in Chinese? In the next lesson, we will learn the numbers in Chinese from one to ten. I'll be waiting for you in our next 三分钟汉语 lesson. 再见 Hey, 大家好，我叫马艳茹。Hi, everybody. I am Yan Ru Ma. Welcome to Chinese Class 101.com's 三分钟汉语 ，the fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn Chinese. In the last lesson, we learned some words used when apologizing in Chinese, including 请问 and 不好意思 In this lesson, we are going to learn numbers in Chinese. Yes, numbers, 数字 From one to ten, and you are going to learn them in only three minutes. 三分钟 Are you ready? Let's start. 一一二二三三四四五五六六七，七，八，八，
九，九，十，十。Okay, now repeat after me. I will say the numbers and give you time to repeat each one. 一，二，三，四，五，六。七，八，九，十。Great job! What is before e? Do you know the word for zero? It's 零，零。You don't have any more excuses. You can now give your friends your cell phone number in Chinese. Let's try it together. We will use the phrase. 我的号码是 ，which means my number is. 我的号码是，一三零九四二五零六三七。Can you read it by yourself? 一三零九四二五零六三七。Perfect. Now it's time for Yenris tips. When we talk about numbers like telephone numbers, bus numbers, and so on, we pronounce one as yao. For example, a bus number one o one is pronounced yao ling yao, and you can even use yao instead of e when saying phone numbers. Try it when you are in China. I'm sure that it will impress people a lot. Do you know the Chinese word for a hundred? In the next lesson, we are going to learn the numbers from eleven to a hundred in Chinese. Your task now is to practice the numbers we studied in this lesson, from 一 to 十。再见。Want to master grammar? So you can speak properly, express yourself better, and understand more. In this video, I'll show you how to master grammar with our lessons and learning program. Let's begin. Number one, listen to the lesson conversations and explanations. In every lesson, you learn a conversation. Then, our teachers break down every word and grammar rule. So you're actually learning grammar rules in the context of conversations, and you can easily see how they're used. Once you're done, review the conversation again and again to remember what you've learned. Number two, read the bonus explanations and tutorials. With the lesson notes, you get extra grammar explanations and examples that are not presented in the lesson. After you're done with the lesson, read the lesson notes for extra review. You can even save them as PDFs so that you can access them anytime. Number three, leave a comment on the lesson. Once you've learned a grammar point, be sure to use it. Leave a comment in the comment section. Write some example sentences for practice. Our teachers will review your comment and give you feedback. Number four, unlock even more grammar lessons. If you want to find all of the grammar lessons available, visit our lesson library. Under category, choose grammar. You'll get all of the pathways and lessons dedicated to helping you learn and master sentence patterns and grammar points. So, if you're ready to finally learn a new language the fast, fun, and easy way, sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Signing up takes less than 30 seconds, and you'll start speaking from your very first lesson. If you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share it with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye. Hey, 大家好，我叫马燕如。Hi, everybody. I'm Yen Ru Ma. Welcome to Chinese Class 101.com's 三分钟汉语 ，the fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn Chinese. In the last lesson, we learned the numbers from one to ten. Have you forgotten? Here, I will tell you again. 一、二、三、四。
五、六、七、八、九、十。And now let's continue from eleven. 十一，十一，十二，十二，十三，十三。十四，十四，十五，十五，十六，十六，十七，十七，十八，十八，十九，十九。And finally, we have 二十二十 Okay, now repeat after me. I will say the numbers and give you time to repeat each one. 十一十二十三十四十五十六、十七、十八、十九、二十。These numbers may seem harder to remember, but they're actually very simple. Just take the numbers you learned in the last lesson and put a 十 in front of them. So saying eleven is like saying ten one, saying twelve is like saying ten two, and so forth. Then when you get to twenty, you just say two ten. Isn't that easy? Let's not stop at twenty. Counting up to one hundred is super easy. Now I will give you the tens. Thirty, thirty, forty. 四十，五十，五十，六十，六十，七十，七十，八十，八十，九十，九十。一百，一百。Memorizing these numbers is incredibly easy. Notice that all tens start with 十 and all tens end with 十 Do remember what 十 means? Of course, it is the word for ten. So actually, all you have to remember are the numbers from one to ten. Then for one hundred, you have to learn one new word. Bai. What do you put in front of it? Yi, which is one. So it really is like saying one hundred. The last thing to learn in this lesson is how to form compound numbers about twenty. This is super easy. Take the tens and simply add the numbers you learned in the previous lesson. Let's try it out. How would you say fifty-six in Chinese? Let's take it step by step. Fifty is 五十 and then add six, 六五十六 It's done. Isn't that easy? Let's make another number. For instance, ninety-eight. Take ninety 九十 and add eight 八九十八 Now it's time for Yero's tips. After only two lessons, you are now able to count to one hundred in Chinese. But do you know how to say years like nineteen fifty? You might think it would be long and difficult, but actually, it's super easy. You don't have to say 十九五十 which is nineteen fifty, or 一千九百五十 which is one thousand. 
nine hundred fifty. All that you need to do is to say it number by number, like telephone numbers. So it could be one nine five zero, 一九五零 and then 年 which means year, 一九五零年 In the next lesson, we are going to put your number knowledge to use. Do you have all the skills you need to go shopping in China? If not, I will be waiting for you in our next 三分钟汉语 lesson. 再见。Hey, 大家好，我叫马艳茹。Hi, everybody. I'm Yanru Ma. Welcome to Chinese Class One Hundred One dot com. Three 分钟汉语 ，the fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn Chinese. In the last lesson, we learned how to count in Chinese. I hope you spend some time practicing numbers because they will come in handy for this lesson. We are going to learn how to go shopping in China. Before we go. You need to know how to say how much is this. 这个多少钱？这个多少钱 ？Are you ready to go shopping in China? Let's go. You see something you like and want to ask the shopkeeper how much it costs. The first thing to say is, 请问 Do you remember what that means? Excuse me. 请问这个多少钱？请问这个多少钱 ？If we want to be more specific when asking how much is this, or refer to a certain type of object, it's super easy. We just need to add the noun. For example, 帽子 a hat. 请问这个帽子多少钱 ？Excuse me, how much is this hat? 请问这个帽子多少钱？ Another example, 杯子 cup. 请问这个杯子多少钱 Excuse me, how much is this cup? 请问这个杯子多少钱 At this point, the shopkeeper can answer by saying 这个 which means this, and then the cost. For example, 这个 What number is 55? I'm not telling you. Okay, okay. It's 55. It costs 55 yuan. If you think it's too expensive, say, 能便宜点吗 This means can it be a little cheaper? It's really useful in China, but it won't work if you are in something like a large department store where bargaining isn't allowed. At this point, can you count renminbi in Chinese? We're going to learn how to do this and much more in the next lesson. I'll be waiting for you in our next 三分钟汉语 lesson. 再见。If you're tired of knowing and speaking the language at a basic level and want to express yourself fluently, just like native speakers, then you'll need to learn grammar. The problem? It can be tricky to learn. But don't worry. In this guide, you'll discover how to learn and master grammar with the Grammar Bank. One, where to get all of the grammar explanations you'll ever need. Two. The best way to learn grammar that's right for your level, and three, how to expose yourself to real examples until the rules become natural to you with a study tool called the Grammar Bank inside of our learning program. But first, if you don't yet have access to our program, sign up for a free lifetime account right now. Just click the link in the description. First, what is the Grammar Bank? The Grammar Bank is like a grammar dictionary, except online. It's a database of the must-know grammar rules and explanations that makes it easy to look up specific rules and learn them. Look for it in the top menu of our site. Two, how do you learn grammar with it? The best way to learn grammar is not to just study rules, 
but to learn in context and hear the grammar used in real life. And that's exactly how you learn with our lessons. You learn a quick conversation and hear how the grammar rules are used within that conversation. Three, what if you come across grammar that you're not familiar with? Or what if you want to review a specific rule without going back to redo a lesson? That's where the grammar bank comes in. You can look up grammar rules and get the explanations, examples, and links to lessons where we cover these rules. You can also sort grammar by learning level. So if you're an absolute beginner and want to make sure you know all of the absolute beginner grammar rules, you can do just that with the grammar bank. You can also sort the rules by spelling, category, and lesson series. And if you want to get used to the grammar patterns so that you can use them in conversation and become fluent, the best way is to expose yourself to examples as much as possible. Grammar is hard at first, but gets easy once you get used to it with enough exposure. Be sure to access the related lessons inside the grammar bank and listen to the native conversations that use the rule as much as possible. So, if you want to become fluent and speak perfectly, you'll need grammar. Take advantage of the grammar bank inside of our learning program. But if you don't yet have access, sign up for a free lifetime account right now. Just click the link in the description to sign up. Hey, 大家好，我叫马艳茹。Hey, everybody, I'm Yeru Ma. Welcome to Chinese Class 101.com's 三分钟汉语 ，the fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn Chinese. In the last lesson, we learned how to show gratitude by saying 谢谢 In this lesson, we will learn some of the most common greetings used in China. 准备好了吗 Are you ready? 我们开始吧 So let's start. The most commonly used greeting is 你好你好 You may remember this from lesson one. 你好 means hi, hello, and how do you do? It's a slightly formal expression, though, so just use it at work or similar occasions. Don't use it with your family and friends. The informal hello is sure to be familiar to you. You probably use it every day already. Hey, hey. If it sounds familiar, it's because it's just like the English hey, but make sure to say it with the right Mandarin tone. Hey. When you want to greet someone in the morning, you can also say 早啊，早啊。It's very commonly used. But it's slightly informal. What about when we leave? What should we say? 再见 This very common expression is similar in meaning to the English "see you again." 再见 This is goodbye. Though simple, it can be used in almost all occasions. Now you can greet people in many different ways in Chinese. Let's review them all again. When meeting people for the first time or in a formal occasion. 你好 When meeting friends or family members, you can say "Hey." In the early morning, you can say "Zao." When leaving, no matter whether it's a formal or informal situation, 再见 It's easy, isn't it? Now it's time for Yanru's tips. As you know, there are more and more Chinese starting to learn English. This has started to affect the language. Just like how you can say "Hey" instead of "Ni hao." You can also say bye bye instead of 再见 So if you forget how to say 你好 and 再见 you can use the easy hey's and bye bye's, and people will understand you with no problem. During the next lesson, we will learn the meaning of the phrase 你会说英语吗 Do you already know it? I will be waiting to talk about it with you in our next 三分钟汉语 lesson. 再见 Learning to carry a conversation is vital to mastery of any language. Even beginners can quickly learn conversational language well enough to carry on real conversations with native speakers. Of course, beginners won't be able to carry a conversation the same way they could in their native language. But just knowing a few tips, like which questions to ask to keep a conversation going, are all you need to speak and interact with real native speakers. 
Before we get to specific suggestions, let's first take a closer look at how having real conversations in your target language is so vital to your mastery of the language. Communicating with other people is the very point of language, and conversation comes easily in our native tongue. For beginners, or anyone learning a new language, conversations aren't easy at all, and even simple greetings can be intimidating and awkward. Nothing kills a conversation faster than long periods of awkward silence, so you need practice and specific strategies to avoid them. When you know what to say to keep a conversation going, communication becomes much easier, and you make a better impression on your listener. Nothing will help you learn to speak a language faster and truly master the language than having real conversations with native speakers. Conversations quickly expose you to slang, cultural expressions, and vocabulary that force you to absorb and assimilate information faster than any educational setting. And that's a great thing! But how can you possibly have real conversations with real people if you're just starting out? Here are three proven methods that even beginners can quickly use to learn conversational language to make a great impression and avoid awkward silences. First, ask questions to keep a conversation going. For beginners and even more advanced speakers, the key is to ask questions to keep a conversation going. Of course, they can't be just random questions or else you may confuse the listener. But by memorizing a few key questions and the appropriate time to use them, you can easily carry a conversation with minimal vocabulary or experience. And remember, the more conversations you have, the quicker you will learn and master the language. Second, learn core vocabulary terms as quickly as possible. You don't need to memorize thousands of words to learn conversational language. In fact, with just a couple hundred words, you could have a very basic conversation. And by learning maybe 1,000 to 2,000 words, you could carry a conversation with a native speaker about current events, order in restaurants, and even get directions. To help you get started with this, check out our 2,000 common words, also known as our core list. These 2,000 words are all you need to learn to speak fluently and carry a conversation with a native speaker. Third, study video or audio lessons that you can play and replay again and again. If you want to know how to carry on a conversation, then you need exposure to native speakers, and the more, the better. Studying video or audio lessons is ideal because they provide contextualized learning in your native language, and you can play them again and again until you achieve mastery. Our instructors have created more than 2,500 video and audio lessons that you can play over and over. And the best part is, they don't just teach you vocabulary and grammar. They are designed to help you learn to speak and teach you practical everyday topics like shopping, ordering, and more. Although it may seem intimidating for a beginner, the truth is that it's very easy to learn conversational language. Just learn a few core vocabulary terms and which questions to ask to keep a conversation going. Our language learning program has the world's largest online collection of video and audio lessons by real instructors. Plus, tons of advanced tools to help you learn to speak and carry on a conversation quickly. Just a little practice and exposure to real conversations or lessons is all it really takes. So, if you're ready to finally learn a new language the fast, fun, and easy way, sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Signing up takes less than 30 seconds, and you'll start speaking from your very first lesson. If you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye! Hey, 大家好,我叫马燕如. Hey, everybody, I'm Yenru Ma. Welcome to ChineseClass101.com's 三分钟汉语 the fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn Chinese. In the last lesson, we learned the most common forms of greetings in Chinese. Do you remember them? In this lesson, we're going to learn a very useful phrase. Do you speak English? If you find yourself in a situation where you need assistance in English, this phrase can be a lifesaver. But because you're asking it in Chinese, you can be sure that everyone will understand what you are saying even if the answer is no. Here is a common, slightly informal way to say it. 你会说英语吗? 你会说英语吗? Let's break that down. 
you, 你 can, 会 speak, 说 English, 英语 question mark particle, 吗 You will notice the word 你 in the beginning of the sentence. Remember that this is the way to say you. The next word, 会 is like the English can. Then we have the verb 说 which means to speak. Next up is 英语 the word for English. And last we have 吗 This is used to ask a question. It works just like a question mark. Put it at the end of the sentence with a low tone. Altogether, it's 你会说英语吗 To learn how to properly use verbs like 会 please look at our Absolute Beginner series on ChineseClass101.com. You can find very detailed grammar lessons and resources there. We are now going to make this sentence formal. First, we need to use the formal version of you, which is 您 Even if we change the word for you, we don't need to change the verb 会 Everything stays the same. 您会说英语吗？您会说英语吗 ？Adding 请问 the sentence becomes even more polite. It means something like "Excuse me" here. Altogether, it's 请问您会说英语吗 ？The responses you will receive could be one of these three: 会 yes. 会 or 会，我会说一点。Yes, I can speak a little. 会，我会说一点。Or 我不会说。No, I don't. 我不会说。Since this last one is a negative statement, we need to say the negative word 不 before the verb. Wait, it's just that easy. Now it's time for Yenru's tips. For those of you who are not only English speakers, you can use this question with any language you need. More and more Chinese people are studying other languages, so maybe you will get lucky. Just replace 英语 with 意大利语 for Italian, 俄语 for Russian, 西班牙语 for Spanish, 德语 For German, this lesson we mentioned the expression "Xin Wen," but did you know that this could also be used as an apology? In the next lesson, we will learn this and other ways to apologize in Chinese. I will see you in our next 三分钟汉语 lesson. 再见。Expand your vocabulary with our Core 2000 Words eBook. It's free and packed with essential expressions that you'll use on a daily basis. Start building your vocabulary today. Click the link in the description below to download your free Chinese eBook before it's gone.